Hello and welcome back to Meal Wars. If you're anything like me, ditching takeout and processed foods is a goal that sounds awesome. But where do you start? Well, one good place is with some of the tools you're gonna need for the job. Because let's face it, the battle for control of your kitchen is never really gonna be over. But it begins right here and right now, only on Meal Wars. First off, full disclosure, everything we talk about today is linked in the description, and those links are affiliate links, meaning Amazon will give us like 11 cents or something if you buy through them. So if you're in the market for any of these things and would like to help out the show, that would be a great way and we would very much appreciate it. We're just 11 cents away from feeding this small child. So first up on the basics is a good chef's knife. This is something that people spend a lot of money on, but I really don't believe in buying expensive knives. They need to be sharp, they need to feel good in your hand, they need to be a weight that you can handle, but they don't need to cost hundreds of dollars. The Victorinox 8 inch chef's knife is my personal favorite. They're light, but they're not too light. The Fibrox handle won't slip in your hand if your hands are greasy or wet, and they hold an edge pretty well, and they cost about 40 bucks. But Drew, you say, I don't even know how to cut with anything that crazy big. Big? It's eight inches. All right, let's do a little intro to cutting with a chef's knife. It's all about these two fingers. And no, that's not what she said. I don't know what we're gonna do with these people. Their minds are just in the gutter. So first, you wanna grip the knife with these two fingers. That gives you full control over the blade. So we're gonna cut up these carrots here. With this hand, you wanna point the fingers downwards like this. And then we bring the knife down in sort of a rocking motion like this. And then you feed the food towards the knife with the other hand. When you get all this down, all of a sudden, all the chopping that seems so daunting, it'll be a breeze. As an even cheaper option, Sam's Club carries these Santokus, which I use a lot as well. There are some I've had for more than 15 years and they're still fantastic. It's this a totally straight blade, so you don't get that really good rocking motion. And I do find that for really large chopping jobs, like a Thanksgiving dinner for 30 or something like that, my hand will get a lot more tired with the Santoku, but they're still great to have around. On to item number two, a cast iron skillet. As I've said before, a cast iron skillet is incredibly versatile. It holds heat well, it can take high heat, and it goes from the stove to the oven without missing a beat. I have this 14 inch one, and if you have a family like I do, you'll probably want a larger one as well. I'll link to some other sizes in the description also. But Drew, you say, this stuff is a pain to take care of. And it's true. It needs to be seasoned to prevent rust, and if done properly, that can make it non-stick also. So how do we do that? Well, we take some canola oil, and we cover the pan with it. As I consider canola oil to be pretty much unfit for human consumption, this is probably the only thing you will ever see me do with canola oil. I do not eat canolas, and therefore have zero use for canola oil. So you really kind of want to buff it out a bit so there's no pooling. You want this to be even. Then we put that in a 450 degree oven for one hour. Then you probably do want to repeat that process at least one more time right after to get a really nice seasoning on it. Then when you wash it, don't use soap, use one of these. Yeah, I know, people argue and say that you can use soap, and you can if you want to, but I just say don't. It's not necessary. But what if you're lazy? And what if you're like me and you use your cast iron pan on such high heat sometimes that it burns off the seasoning? What if you think seasoning pans is just a tool of the patriarchy and you're not gonna do it? Well, I feel you. And I have a solution for you. Just don't tell any other YouTube people about it, okay? Because they'll be upset. It's just between us. Clean the pan with the metal cleaner as usual after every use. Dry it really well, water is your enemy. Cast iron will rust without a proper seasoning. And before you put it away, spray this on it. Yep, the same canola oil we use for the seasoning, just spray that on it and your cast iron will be just fine. But I didn't tell you that. The third item won't cost you a dime and it doesn't need an affiliate link. Say you're someone who isn't used to cooking from scratch at home. You make an occasional recipe, but it's just too big an undertaking to cook from scratch every day, right? Plus, when you go out and you get ingredients to make that recipe, it's expensive expensive to buy all that stuff, right? The answer is a simple little mind hack. Pick about 10 things that you wanna make regularly. 10's a good number because we don't wanna eat the same things all the time and we like to change them up a bit. Then, don't think about shopping for recipes. Think about it like stocking your kitchen. For instance, 
I make a lot of Chinese food in our house. So I always have fresh garlic and I have fresh ginger on hand. I keep things in stock like canned water chestnuts and various sauces used in Chinese cooking. With all this in stock, I have the ability to make all the things on my list of usual recipes and I have at least most of the ingredients to do something new. So many other recipes have onions, so we always have onions in stock. We have potatoes in stock. We have an array of spices in stock that can be used for just about anything. But what if the stock goes bad? Doesn't, because you use it. Will you have an onion that you don't use go bad sometimes? Yeah, probably. But overall, it's far cheaper than buying pre-made junk and massively cheaper than eating out or getting takeout. When you shop like this, not only does it make things cheaper and easier, but it also means you're likely to have at least most of the ingredients on hand for any new recipe you see. Thus, your prep for those will also be cheaper. This one change probably seems tiny, maybe even silly, but it's a game changer in creating a manageable way of adding daily scratch cooking to the workflow of your life. If you're someone just beginning this journey of regularly cooking at home, I hope today's episode helped you at least start off. We have more episodes like this in the pipeline, so please let us know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see. And keep at it, because this is a journey that is incredibly rewarding and a lot of fun. I hope you liked what you saw today, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe, and hit that bell button, because you need to know when episodes of Meal Wars are out, right? I mean, I know I do. Thanks for watching, and I hope I see you next time.